Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. and in today's video I will teach you how to become a sensor. Tell me Eric, how do I become a sensor? I get questions all the time from people who wish they had better sensing, who wish they were as smart as the sensors, as gifted as the sensors. Um, maybe not actually, but to this, the thing is, like intuitives have a lot of bias against sensing and uh, their experiences and how they describe sensing tends to be extremely biased and prejudiced and limited and this video will challenge some of those assumptions. Perhaps the first thing you will want to look at is the fact that often when intuitives describe sensing, what they are describing is unhealthy sensing. Often we carry a bias in which we look at sensing from what it is at its worst rather than what it is at its best. And that's pretty normal. When a feeler describes a thinker, they tend to describe it from what the thinker isn't rather than from what the thinking person is. When a thinking person describes a feeler, it is based on what they are not rather than what they are. We tend to focus more on other people's flaws rather than their strengths, especially when we don't understand it. And this video is about understanding it. It's about understanding your sensing, your own sensing, and understanding sensors and it's about the question, can I become better at sensing? Can I become a sensor? And how do I become a sensor? What I've noticed is that sensing is in so many ways related to a normal amount of sensitivity, a normal level of sensitivity to the sensing type. The world isn't as overwhelming as it is to the intuitive type. Where the intuitive type tends to describe details and experience and bright lights and strong sounds and touch and things like that as overwhelming or draining or tiresome, when intuitives tend to talk about needing to retreat to a dark room or when intuitives tend to skip over details, jumping from plan to plan, jumping over and avoiding data points, uh, when Intuitives talk about sensing often. It strikes me how shallow intuitives can be. Like, it's true. Like, we tend to describe sensors as shallow and superficial. But in one, from one point of view, isn't it the intuitives that can be prone to shallowness? Because intuitives tend to often skip above a few leaps. Aren't intuitives the ones that are the most prone to prejudice and to generalizations, to stereotypes and to fickle or, in many ways, um, to jumping conclusions? When the sensors enjoy building up data points step by step, ensuring everything is verified, ensuring everything can be trustworthy, reliable, used, to ensuring everything is practical, to making sure there are physical, tangible benefits of something, intuitives go, ah, I think it will give benefits, oh, I think it will work, it should probably work, it's almost ready, it's kind of good. Intuitives tend to speak in these kinds of uh, almosts and possibles and yeah, maybe, so, should, should is a favorite word of mine, it should work, I think it should be right. And um, to some extent this is a gift and to some extent this is a death, death trap waiting to happen. Uh, it is a famous last word, it should probably not be dangerous, it will probably not be harmful. It's a famous last word, uh, really, to a lot of people, I think. Perhaps that's why intuitives are so rare, I'm not sure. I'm not saying that intuitives are daredevils, or that they are reckless, or that they are prejudiced, or that they are doomed to any of these behaviors. I'm talking about what intuition can look like when it's unhealthy, or when it's in a bad shape. And I don't think we talk about this because, well, as intuitives, I think we pride ourselves on using intuition to its fullest, in a healthy, in a secure, in a trustworthy, in a reliable way. We want intuition to be done and used skillfully. We pride ourselves in skillful use of intuition and predicting successfully how something will work, in figuring out things that nobody else can figure out, in making accurate guesstimates about the world, in understanding things, in conceptualization, in abstraction, in figuring things out. Intuitives pride themselves on this ability and they feel smart when they can do it, they feel intelligent when they can do it, they feel aware, intu intuitive, they feel a heightened sense of 
insight and wisdom. With intuitives, it is that a uh, heightened sensitivity often hinders them from practicing and participating in the real world to the same way that a sensor would. Where the intuitive extrovert goes into reality with this kind of uh, map to guide her vision, oh I should look at that and then I should look at that and then I should look at that, in this kind of pattern-based perception of the world. Uh, they skip over everything else, they skip everything that isn't part of the pattern. They are so focused on the next pattern and the next pattern and the next pattern that they ignore everything outside of it. And they do it, of course, because, well, for the extrovert intuitive, the world around them is slightly overwhelming. To the extroverted sensor, the world around them is in itself interesting. Everything about the world around them is interesting. Everything around them is fulfilling and meaningful. The extroverted sensor goes, oh, the sunshine is amazing. Oh, I love the blue skies. I love the contrast. I love being here in this space. I like this party. I like the people here. <laughs> the intuitive extrovert, they go, they, they, they only see the things that are possible. They only see this possibility and the next possibility and the possibility after that. Sometimes forgetting it to live in the moment. Well, actually intuitive extroverts can live in the moment, but only the moment that they envision, only the possible moment, only the part of the moment that their eyes want to flow into. When there is no pattern to guide their vision, they get stressed out, rattled, anxious. It's, uh, to them, it's draining to be in an, emo an environment, but to have nothing to do in it, to have no things happening, to not know what you're doing in it. Uh, they need to have an idea of where they are going into. They need to see these threads and these possibilities coming up. Because without those possibilities, without their Im imagination, which is so important to the intuitive, the intuitive cannot function. And thinking about it then, it would have to... The intuitive would have to engage in a long-term rewiring of themselves. They have to tune down this sensitivity. They have to get, get rid of it. They have to somehow find a way to abolish it, to not be sensitive, to retrain and rewire their nervous system so that they aren't sensitive to touch, so that they aren't sensitive to sound, so that they aren't sensitive to distracting visuals. And I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I don't know how, if that's possible. I've never seen an intuitive do it. I've never seen an intuitive go from being an intuitive to being a sensor, even if they tried. So how do you cope with it? How do you deal with it as an intuitive? How do you pretend to be a sensor? How do you survive as a sensor, really? The best answer here is you use your intuition. Uh, we tend to say, as INFJs and ENFPs, talking about sensing, oh, yeah, I was developing my extroverted sensing, so I went to the gym. Oh, I was practicing my introverted sensing, so I was looking at old pictures. Uh, but what gives energy to the intuitive in sensing is the possibilities in it. Without the possibilities of it, without the patterns in it, without the connections made by it, it gives nothing. So the obvious answer here is to get value from sensing as an intuitive, you have to go from intuition into sensing. You have to use intuition to guide your vision, to guide where in an environment you look, what you look for in your environment, how you look at old memories, how you use healthy nostalgia, how you use reminiscing, what you use it for, how you connect it to your current experience, your current life and to who you are now, how you connect the dots between the past years and a few, your past relationships, uh, your past experiences, photos of people, and who they are now and what's happening now. That's how an ENFP and ENTP gets a kick out of the past. It's not that they are having a trip into introverted sensing, it's that they are taking the bus that is extrovert intuition, sorry, the spaceship, sorry, the unicorn, no, sorry, I shouldn't use that metaphor, it's uh, rude, um, the spaceship uh, that is extrovert intuition and going into introverted sensing and exploring it from this uh, uh, spyglass, looking at it from this extrovert intuitive vision channeler, sorry, I'm properly alienating the sensors now, uh, through this, there is a heightened amount of physicality to sensing. It's a literality, it's a tangibility. Sensors are and need something to touch, something to see, something to hold. 
And what I'm telling you about the intuitives, that issue that gets them from, st stops them from being sensors, that stop them from living in the present, exists for sensors too. Sensors similarly are sensitive to ideas. Sensitive to ideas in the sense that to them, an idea, to an intuitive, an idea is just a hypothetical, it's just an idea, it's just a possibility. An <laughs> intuitive has so many possibilities, so many ideas, so many visions, so many theories. The sensor, to the sensor, an idea is so much more real. To the sensor, your ideas, your impressions, your thoughts, your possibilities are so much more intense than what they are to you as an intuitive. To you, uh, uh, to the sensor, intuition can freak the fuck out of you. <laughs> it can, seriously, like uh, intuition, impressions, ideas can scare the hell out of you as a sensor. And that's because for you, it's uh, when you hear an idea, when you think of or imagine yourself uh, dating someone or playing a video game or doing something, <laughs> that idea plays tricks on you in a sense and that's uh, um, it's in the it plays tricks on you in the sense that you feel so real to you as a sensor intuition feels so real so important so tangible and um, it is harder in that sense for the sensor to tell the difference between this idea world and reality and it is also that sensor is perceived as idea world as draining, tiresome, burdensome. These hypotheticals, these what unexplored what ifs, are heavy, uh, heavy in themselves. Because to the into uh, to the sensor, they. Uh, they carry an intensity that the intuitive doesn't have to deal with. The intuitive experiences lightness in intuition. They go into when in the intuition the intuitive catches into flight. They feel lighter. They move on more lightly with more energy, with bubbliness, with enthusiasm. But when the sensor goes into intuition, it's like putting on an extra backpack, putting on weight pads on your arms. It's like these ideas, these thoughts, these possibilities weigh you down and it's hard to envision that as an intuitive it's hard to know, understand what that feels like I think often and I want to return to this point that I started with in this video that intuitives don't really see sensors they don't really understand sensors they don't get sensors what they get is disillusioned intuitives they look at disillusioned bitter intuitives and they think that these people are sensors, when in reality they are often intuitives burdened by the weight of sensing, lacking in vision, lacking in ideas, overwhelmed by the world. They are looking at these overwhelmed intuitives and thinking, oh, that's a typical sensor. They are bored, they are draining, they are tiresome, they are annoying to be around, they are always uh, so rigid and nitpicky. That's not the real sensor. The real sensor finds energy, awareness, insight, pleasure, thrill, clarity, enthusiasm in sensing. They are happy in sensing. They are enriched by sensing. They are lightened up by sensing. They find fun in physicality. They put the, they put the energy into it. They get lightness from it. They find their wings in it. And a sensor getting their wings is a sensor going into sensing. And um, this is important to recognize because it means everyone has a different way to get energy. Everyone has a different way to get influence. And the core goal here is to get influence. The core goal here is to get out of the autopilot. I've said it before and I must say it again. The sensor is not a zombie as often portrayed. The sensor has a heightened awareness when engaging in sensing. They are highly aware of themselves and what they are doing when they are in sensing. They are aware of the, how their bodies, they are aware of where they are, they are aware of physical reality, they are aware of what decisions they make in reality, they are aware of details, they are aware of 
organization, order, structure, and oft lessons on the past. And intuitives are not. When intuitives go into sensing, that's when they go into autopilot. When sensors go into intuition, that's when they go into autopilot. An idea freaks out, that freaks them out, drains them, bores them, weighs down on them until they lose their energy and their concentration and their focus and their eyes go mole and they go into this monotone voice and they <laughs> enter this hypnotic version of themselves. And that's the static mindset, the autopilot that we are all at risk of falling into. And um, the key goal to getting out of autopilot, the key goal to getting a more active mindset is tuning into your interests. At the core of it all, intuition or sensing is your core interest or passion, your hobby. And if you know if you're a sensor, then you know what your hobby is. Then you know what you should do to get energy from your life. Then you know what you need to do. You need to find ways to go into sensing and from sensing, from practicality, from physicality, from real existence, from your body, from action, from sports, from lifestyle, real lifestyle, real life, going into intuition, using sensing as a shield to put the fun in intuition, using sensing, using practical, physical reality to explore ideas, to explore possibilities, rather than putting on the brakes, tuning out of your dominant motor, your engine that is sensing, to, uh, and uh, taking the back door and walking all the way into intuition and trying to hardwire and rewire yourself until you become an intuitive or until you get this gift. That's not how you get it. If you want it, you can get it, but you have to be yourself to get there. That's the point of my video. I hope I made myself clear. I hope that this video helped understand, helped you understand sensors better. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, share, and thank you all for watching.